Hey guys, in today's video I'm going to make my version of the house from the new Ghostbusters Afterlife movie. My last video with the cabin from the Evil Dead was the first time that I built an exterior structure, and so this one is a lot more complicated and I don't think I quite understood what I was in for when I started the project. It's been a really long couple weeks of just trying to catch back up and get this thing finished and I've got to tell you at a couple of points I really did not know how I was going to pull it off. Other things like my full-time job also got pretty busy this month and so everything kind of came together to make it really difficult and I never really felt like I was going to burn out at any point during this YouTube channel until this month. But there are a lot of exciting things going on and now that I have finished this project I'm excited to continue making new things in the future with maybe a better plan to manage my time and expectations for my projects. So I'm building the house in 1 24th scale again and I 3D printed all the windows and doors. I modeled them just really basic models in my Shaper 3D program on my iPad so I could print them all out and know that I'm going to have what I need. I sketched out the structure of what I th thought I could do with it at least and started cutting the pieces out of foam core and gluing them together. I print all these windows and doors with a resin 3D printer and the way I do it to make it fast is I actually use something called a wham bam flexible build plate system. You basically put a piece of um, adhesive magnet onto the build plate and then you have a flexible piece of metal that magnetizes to that and so when you print out your piece you can just bend it and pop things off and so you can print these windows flat on the plate and it makes it really easy to just print a bunch of them fast and pop them off without them breaking. This is quite different than how you would normally print like a miniature and it's really handy for tasks like this. I also 3D printed these pieces of trim for all of them so I could just put that on and when I paint everything it will look like they have nice trim around them and look finished. For the siding I used these pre-molded plastic styrene sheets that were for the scale and as well for the shingles. These aren't super cheap but it made it really easy. I just had to measure and cut them to size, glue them, and then you can just paint them. This file was actually something I found on Thingiverse. It was for Legos, but I thought it worked great for this tower. I just scaled it to what I wanted and had to print it in two pieces because my 3D printer at the time was only a standard size and couldn't fit the whole thing. Then I primed it all with a rattle can and took it inside to put a base layer color down with my airbrush. As I planned for this build, I looked at the trailer and took screenshots of every little angle that I could of the house, there weren't many, and I could tell there were a lot of little details and even some of the architecture and structure, I did not do all of the details because it just would have taken a little bit too much of my time. So I made my version of it without making myself go too insane. But pretty much right from the first time I saw the trailer, I knew I wanted to make this house because it looked perfectly abandoned, but it was still lived in and so it still was functional and not destroyed and I thought it'd be a great project. To add age and weathering to the roof, I started using a couple different layers of washes, just really thin down paints and some paper towel to um, pick up some of the extra. And now I want to share something with you that I just got that I'm really excited about. I talked about the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro on this channel, but I've actually owned two Anycubic printers before now as well. Anycubic was kind enough to send me their brand new Photon Mono X 6K, and this is a larger format resin printer. All of the printers that I've had before are standard size, and I was limited in what I could print. This new version of the Mono X has a 6K screen, so it can provide a lot more detail in the prints, and from what I've seen so far, it can print really fast. It came with all the standard accessories and also a screen protector for the screen. Unfortunately, I was dumb and fiddled around too much and got dust under it, and so I couldn't end up using the screen protector. I'm going to have to get another one. So then I went on to level the build plate, and to be honest, this is probably the easiest printer I've had to level. The resin vat has some feet on it, so they sit perfectly in the little notches, and then they have these big screws to go down and lock it in place. I filled it up with some resin and ran the test print. Anycubic sent me this printer early, and they are actually taking pre-orders as of today, Monday, November 15th. I believe it is a special introductory price as well. 
They did not sponsor this video, they sent it to me for free. After a quick inspection, it was time to look at it myself and it came out pretty good. I think the settings might have been a little overexposed and I totally broke the base off of this as I was scraping it off the build plate, but the detail was great. And so I filled a new build plate up with some pieces that fit the theme of today's build. These models are from Photos Mint and I'm linking them in the description. The details came out really good and I can't wait to actually dial this printer in to see how good it can get. I have a lot of plans for future projects to use this larger format printer and it was actually something that I specifically asked for because I already had their smaller printers and loved them but I needed the bigger size. So you'll be seeing a lot more of it on this channel. If you're fairly new to the channel, this is my liquid latex technique. Go back and see some of my other videos on how I do it. Now I'm cutting out this plastic mesh to use to wrap around the bottom of the house to protect the crawl space from critters. After gluing it, I painted it brown and moved on. Everything got a little bit of pigment powders to dirty them up. I love powders because they make just a nice dusty look and feel to everything. And I almost always use them in conjunction with washes. I let some brown wash kind of streak down and wiped up the excess and did a little bit of green here and there, different colors to add some subtle weathering. Then I made a couple of radio tower dish things with plastic styrene rods and glued them in place. I also 3D printed this radar dish and a couple others that I got from Thingiverse. I'll link those in the description as well. Now the porch and the overhang in the actual house in the movie wrapped around the side of the house and it was much more elaborate, but I just didn't have that kind of time and so I made it fairly simple with an aluminum roof hang and a small porch in front. I'm also realizing that I'm getting more and more sensitive to certain paints and glues, so I'm wearing the respirator a lot more lately. And then I printed this horse weather vane that I got on Thingiverse and put it on. Now here's when things started to get really interesting. I started looking at the house and the size of it and my camera, and I decided I needed a really large base to do what I wanted to do. So this is foam insulation, and I made it about 4 foot by 4 foot. Then I mixed some tile grout and started building up the land formation. I learned these techniques from Kathy Malat's channel, and I'll link her in the description. I ended up using way more tile grout than I thought. It was more than 20 pounds worth, and when I brought it back inside, I thought the whole thing might break in half. It was nice and heavy. But then I started using my static grass applicator and adding grass all over the place. I used a really dead yellowish grass at first, and I think it was only like two millimeter. Started building up longer grasses in different colors to give it variety. I also used an even darker brown grass after all of this, but I didn't get it on camera. Then I added the dead tree and some bushes here and there. Here I started using a dark brown color of tile grout just to get a different color of dirt and especially on this kind of driveway area to give it some variety. And then I started setting up everything to film. This was another thing that ended up being much more difficult. I had to use a blue screen and I don't have quite that much space in my living room. But after a lot of trial and error with a few different techniques, I got these finished shots. Just trying to be real with you guys, this project was a hard one to finish. It just took a lot of time and I want to share when I'm struggling and have 
um, signs of burnout as well. So don't feel bad if that's how you're feeling. I think this craft is awesome and it really helps a lot of us keep ourselves busy and feel creative. But if we're doing too much, it's all right to take a break too. I want to say thank you to Anycubic for sending me the Mono X 6K for free to try out for this channel. I think it's going to be a really good asset and I have a lot of ideas. If you want to check out the Mono X 6K, check the link in the description. I also wanted to thank my patrons as always for supporting this channel and letting me do what I do. The files for all the windows and doors that I use in this house will be available in my shop as well as Patreon at the digital downloads tier. Check those out if you want to get any more content from me and just want to support my channel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.